I just really love Jesus. And I really love the opportunities to be able to talk about him and to just be able to share with him. And uh, just to, to, to be together here is something very, very special. Now, I'm sure I'm going to make some reference to my wife, Kathy, but you, we were welcomed a moment ago. But everybody, you stand up and greet these people. Just say hello to them. Amen. <laughs> she is my bride of 49 years. As of June 27th, just passed. Amen. Now, that's a long time. Amen. Anybody that's been married 49 years has to be getting old. Any, anybody that does anything for 49 years, it takes a long time to live 49 years, although it goes by very, very fast, all right, as we all know. But anyway, some of you heard some of the stories about intercession in regard to Kathy. I'm not going to go a lot into those things today, but somewhere along the line, I'm sure that I will have to mention it because that's become our life, intercession. And to have that opportunity to relate to the Christ and to be close to Him as the great I Am is something that's very, very special. But Kathy and I have been very blessed this week. We've seen prophetic things unfold uh, that were spoken to us many decades ago. And it's fun to some because some things get delayed. Any of you ever had anything delayed? And some things you wonder, man, God, is this ever going to happen? And and you see it, some things it looks like they're not going to happen. It looks like it would be impossible for it to happen. But then God makes it possible to happen. And he does it because he's just good. Amen. Amen. You know, I really like these guys, Wade. They, they are hungry people. Are you guys really hungry? Yes. Amen. I can tell that. Years ago, all right, God said, I'm going to put you with hungry people and hungry people with you. And I believe that I stepped into a whole group of hungry, hungry people in blessed Wales. Wade and Claire, many of you were some of those. And something special is happening in Wales. Yes. Amen. And you guys are there believing for it. And as the uh, couple shared just a moment ago, uh, these guys are right on the cutting edge, this church and what they're believing and what they're saying. So I'm going to very strongly speak some things today, not prophetically. I think we have a service again tonight. And I'm going to take a further step into some things prophetically about whales and some of the intercessions, etc. Wow. I just want to talk about him. All right. Our wonderful, wonderful God, who is so holy, and we've been singing about holiness, and Marty's been singing about holiness and gave us those admonitions. It's just something he really, really wants because he really wants to give us himself, all right? And some months ago, now probably a year ago, because everything goes by so fast, but I started hearing, and sure, well, it was a year ago, June, I can tell you when it was, I started hearing something that. God, and every time I say it, I have to do my hand in a certain way, but it, I just felt God's taking us further into himself. He's just taking us further into himself. And that's what he wants. And when you think about the fact that he is God, that he says through Jesus Christ, and we've been singing. I mean, I kept singing a while ago when Marty was singing that song. If somebody's not saved, they sing that. They've got to get saved. Amen. Because of the Word of God, the presence of God, the anointing of God. I mean, that's what it is. That's this prayer of confession, of recognizing who He is. And I just got thought, God, thank you for just the privilege that you give us to know you and to be saved and to enter into those understandings. But if we're being changed into the image of the Christ, and we know that's what the Word, says, the Word of God says, we're being changed in the, that very image tape being taken from glory to glory. Is that true? So that means there's always a movement in God's kingdom. There's always a revelation of who he is and what he's wanting. And he's wanting to take us further into himself. It's the whole in Christ understanding. It's a fact that the Apostle Paul said in Colossians, he said, Christ in you is the hope of glory. And we're in Christ. Christ is in us. He's in the Father. The Father's in him. We're in him. And man, I mean, that, that means we are being absolutely consumed by everything that God is. That means that everything in this realm needs to become changed by the power and the magnificence of Almighty God. In other words, we don't need to be mere humans. All right? That's something God said to me years ago. He woke me up in the middle of the night and he said, I want to show you how not to be a mere human. And I thought, well, I am a human. 
And that's the way we usually think. And I heard most of my life growing up as a Baptist that, you know, you're a dirty, rotten sinner. You're always going to be a dirty, rotten sinner. And thank God for his grace, because one of these days you're going to die, get to go to heaven, then you're going to be free. But the more that I saw in the word, the more that I realized, no, I need to be free now. That's what Jesus Christ purchased. And you guys were singing it early in this service, and you were happy about it, and you want to be free. And it's not just that I get to be free from the stuff that bothers me. I get to be free because I get to become more and more like Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's something inside that is so very, very important that he really, really wants. So my passion to know him is a driving force in everything. I hunger to know him more and to be more, more, more understanding of who he is and to have that manifestation of his life in every aspect of everything that happens. I want us, first of all, to look at a passage of Scripture in... Sorry about that. I'll have to remember that that's there. In Psalm 24, verse 7. Psalm 24, verse 7. All right? You know this very, very well. But I want us just to read it, and then we're going to go from there. 24, 7 in Psalm. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts is the King of glory. Now, we read that. You're amening that. But you know, there's something about a passion of God where he's wanting us to proclaim with great strength and with great power. I mean, can you imagine why David write that? would write that? Why the psalmist would release that? I mean, folks, we need to live in a realm where we see more into the kingdom realm than we see in this realm, all right? We don't need to be mere humans. We need to be lifted into another realm. In fact, the Word of God teaches us that we're raised up in Ephesians. We're raised up, seated with Christ in heavenly places. That means this. We're sitting right here someplace in Cardiff, <laughs> But you're not really here. I mean, you're here, but you're not here because there is another realm that is to be more real to you than the chair that you're sitting on or the air that you're breathing. I mean, there there is an air that can be breathed that's not like the air we're breathing right now. I mean, some of the intercessions we've walked through, and I won't go through some of them today, but some of these intercessions that we've walked through, Kathy's walked through some incredible things. And there came a prophetic word out at one time, not in the good times, but it came out of some very difficult moments of our lives. And one of the things that God said in it, he said, you know, you've gone through many different things, and they've been very, very difficult. But he said this, but he says, you have breathed the rare air of cherubim wings. Now just let that one sink in a little bit. You've experienced the rare air of cherubim wings. In other words, that, that air and that atmosphere is not just an atmosphere where an angel shows up here, and we know there's an angel here. That angel changes the atmosphere. That angel, and Kathy's been lifted up, taken in the presence of God into the throne room. I mean, many things like that. The reality of our God is this. There is a realm that God wants to take us into. And I tell you, David and the psalmist just didn't write words. They came out of experience. I mean, for example, Isaiah. I mean, here he was. It was depressing times, depressing, difficult realities. The king had died in Isaiah chapter 6. But the reality says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. He saw the Lord. Just say amen to that. He saw the Lord. How many of you want to see the Lord? Amen. Well, you have to be hungry for it, all right? You can't not be hungry for it. You have to want to see him. But so often we think, I don't know if I can really see him or not, or why would he want to show himself to you? He wants to show himself to you because he wants to show himself to you. Amen? And he said he wants to show you. And we're going to read that verse in just a moment. This reality of the fact that he says, Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. And I mean, that needs to be a passion inside of our lives. It needs to be this reality of God saying, no, I have something that I want you to know. I have something that I want you to see. And we have not because we 
ask not, all right? So reality is when he say, God, I want to ask, I want to know, I want to experience you. He said, who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. He is the king of glory. For example, Wade has already said it, we enter in by what? Through the blood, right? We enter in by the blood. We enter in and come into that. There is no way that we cannot come boldly into the throne of God. But how many times do we not come boldly? Because we come like a mere human. Because we come with our shame that we've been wanting to get rid of. Because we come with our guilt. Because we come with our, our greed and with our lust and with our sins that we have in our life. That's the way we come. And, and we know he, he wouldn't do anything for me. But he's saying, no, there's a king of glory that we need to welcome to come in. In other words, the very moment that we come into consciousness, we need to be sure that we're declaring that I'm standing in the presence of the King of glory. Amen? I, I'm His. I'm absolutely His to say, God, I want you. Some months ago now, God awakened me in the night, and He awakens me a lot in the night, unless I'm in Wales, I guess. I have slept more this last week all the way through, I don't ever sleep all the way through, but I, I don't sleep a lot. I wake up, I hear things, I get up, I intercede, I stay up and all those kind of things. But I've slept better this week than I've slept and I don't know when, probably years. So something good is happening, amen? And I appreciate those, those opportunities. But I was awakened one night and God said this, I want you to go. And he said, I want you to turn to Revelation 12, 10 and 11. Don't turn there now, but you can note it. And he said, I want you, every time you wake up, I want you to declare those verses. All right. Now just think of this is what it says. It's John on the Isle of Patmos said this. I heard a loud voice All right now. That's not the kind of voice I just read that scripture with. He said, I heard a loud voice say, and many times we read it and I'm going to quote it. It says this, I heard a loud voice saying now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. And the accuser of the brethren has been cast down. All right. He who accuses them before our God day and night. But they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, loving not their own lives even unto death. Now, I did that, but that's not a loud voice. In other words, that's not what John heard. Scripture comes, I mean, how loudly do you think that Isaiah, and when he was responding to what he saw on the throne, the throne is not quiet. Everything around the throne is absolutely loud, shouting, praising, magnifying, worshiping the Lamb of God. And John had things open up to him, and he said this. He said, this is the reality. He said, I heard a loud voice saying, now, and every time that I get up, I go to another room and I get up and I go to the bathroom and I begin to declare now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come and the accuser of the brethren have been cast down. He who accuses them before our God day and night. And you know what God said to me the first night he gave me that? He said, I wanted to tell something. You, you don't want your problems. How many of you would like to not have any problems? How many of you would like for the devil to leave you alone? He's not going to leave you alone. He's going to accuse you before our God day and night. But you know what we get the privilege of doing? Just like Jesus. Jesus stood right up. He would speak the word of God. Jesus stood up and released the magnificence of who God was. And we get to say, no, I'm overcoming by the blood of the Lamb. The word of the testimony, loving not my own life, even unto death. I don't want to live. I want to know him. I want to experience his grace. I want to experience his power. I want to know who he is. So, folks, I mean, I, I, I have a lot of fun waking up in the night, all right? Because every time I get up, I know something. My God is declaring to me the reality that I am to declare that now salvation. You know, when you say that, you're releasing the word of God. If you don't say it, you're not releasing it. If you're not drawing on it, it's not coming forth. But when you start declaring salvation, how many of you want salvation to have its perfect work inside of you? He's taking us further into himself. Well, if I get up grumbling that I'm awake, there's no faith there. 
if I get up wishing I could go back to sleep when I can't go back to sleep, there's no victory there. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Years ago, we were going through some intercession and, and it was in early in some understanding of spiritual warfare. And I started having this telephone call that would come in the middle of the night and this person would say some very un, unsavory kind of things and I didn't really like it and I would become very annoyed with it. And night after night, this would happen and I would say various things back to this person and well, use the name of Jesus and variety of things. And night after night after night, and one night I said, God, I'm really tired of this. I, I, wh why is this happening to me? And he said, because I want you up to come against the powers of darkness. You have been touching powers of darkness in this geographic area. And he said, because you're touching them, they're coming back at you, and you can silence them in the name of Jesus Christ. The accuser of the brethren is constantly after us, constantly coming against us, wanting you to have doubt, wanting you to have unbelief, wanting you to enter into those things to where you think you cannot and you're not worthy. But we need to have the Word of God active inside of us and being released out of us and confessing the power and the magnificence of God. So when you say, now the salvation, not someday, but now salvation is a living reality inside of our spirits. Now power is a living reality. Now the kingdom of our God has come. The realization that the authority of His Son is being established, it allows that to be released in every aspect of our lives. So when David says, you know, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Folks, we need to have our lives filled with this thing. No, oh, the King of glory is coming. You want the King of glory to come into your life? How much do we spend worshiping Him with that? I mean, there is no limit to what worship can release. There's no limit to what this praise and magnificence of our God can absolutely bring upon each of our lives. He wants us to absolutely say that the glory of His name. I loved a moment ago what you guys shared about out of number six, that blessing the ironic blessing the Lord bless you and keep you powerful because it's invoking his name it's speaking his name it's declaring his name and the blessing is in the name the name is a living reality it's the truth of Almighty God and we need to be filled with the word filled with the understanding filled with that because God is wanting to release something so powerful and I tell you the thing that went across Wales in the 1904 revival and some of those other revivals was the very presence of God himself it wasn't the preaching it wasn't even the evangelism per se now, a lot of it happened but that wasn't where it started trying to do it. It happened because God showed up. It happened because there were people that were touched by the holiness of God that God was able to release something that absolutely could not be denied that made everybody have to reckon with the reality. That's what we need in our lives, but that's what we need throughout our communities where God himself becomes a presence that causes knees to bow before him. Amen? Amen? And we're going to have those opportunities. I mean, the opportunities that God gave us this last week to be able to share the reality of who he is and that understanding that God is alive and that God is moving is just an incredible time. So he's a great God that speaks to us. I want you to go now to the 27th chapter of Psalms, verse 4. One thing, 27, 4, one thing have I asked from the Lord that I shall seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may behold the beauty of the Lord and meditate in his holy temple. Do you like that? Look at verse 8. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, O Lord, I shall seek. In other words, if we become seekers of God, he's not going to hide himself. He's going to show himself. In fact, the Psalm, I mean, the Old Testament prophet said, look, God said he's going to, I'm going to let you find me. I'm going to let you find me. One of my favorite verses in Scripture is the last part of Hebrews 11, 6, where it says that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. 
And I mean, he, 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 he wants us to seek him. And the more that we seek him, the more that he's going to reveal himself to us. The reality is that he's wanting us to come into that position where we have a position before him, where we're standing before him on behalf of the land, where we bring God down in the midst and the lives of individuals and the lives of people. That's what he's wanting. He's wanting to live his life through your human vessel to where your human vessel is not what's dictating what's happening, but the spirit of God is living through you, doing exactly through you what he did through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. What a blessing that he gives us. That verse 4, one thing I've asked from the Lord that I will seek, that I will have, that I that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and to behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. I tell you, God wants us to be with him. And he's taking us further into himself. Right. One of the things that God shows me at times is the fact that just to tell people to get ready that he's preparing to visit them. And to tell them sometimes where he's going to meet them. One of those occasions that happened was in our local church. And one day I'm in the midst of this service and God just said, and I started seeing Jesus show up. First of all, in our home, at a certain spot, to manifest his presence and his holiness. And he said, you are going to have a visitation of my presence in your home. And he showed me the spot. Then he said, I want you to tell people. And I began to see some places in their homes. But I said, get ready, because God is getting ready to come to your home, to walk into your house, to be with you. I mean, why not? We all said, well, he's everywhere. I know he's with me, but we don't always feel him, right? We wonder, God, where are you? Why do we not feel that closeness? Why do we not feel that tangibility? Why do we not live in that realm? It's because sometimes we become so occupied and preoccupied and distracted by being mere humans that we miss this reality of the fact that our God just doesn't want to be with us in theology. He doesn't want to just be with us as a doctrine. He wants to be with us as a person dwelling with us. So I said, God's just shown me that he's going to come to our home. He's going to manifest himself in our bedroom. We have a fairly large bedroom. He's going to manifest himself in front of our, in our bedroom in a certain spot in front of a fireplace that we have there with sitting, it's kind of a sitting area. He's going to be right in the middle of that. He's going to come and he's going to appear. And God's told me to tell you that he's going to appear to your home. This morning as I was praying, God has instructed me to tell you that God, whether it's in the form of God the Father, God the Son, or God the Holy Spirit, I do not know. But God is getting ready to come and visit you in your homes. Yet you you're not ready? You're not, you're, no, you got to, yeah, you, you want to receive that? Yes. Amen. Well, then let's respond. Let's respond. I mean, don't just say, oh, well, will, will he, will he not? I mean, sometimes that's what happens. No, God has told me to tell you that he is wanting to come to your home. Yes. He's wanting to show you where he's going to show up, or you may run into him. I tell people, you look, I, I enjoy waking up in the night hours because of this. I always look to see if I can see God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, if, if there are angels in my room. I look to see those things because why not? I mean, you could get up and walk right past an angel because you're not sensitive to what God wants because you wake up thinking about what it is you're going to have to do the next day that you're not going to be able to do well because of what you're going through rather than just being, I get a chance to talk with God. <laughs> Now I realize I'm a little weird, but I love his presence. I'm hungry for him. I want him. Don't have time to go in this intercession, but we got hit with an intercession back in the 19, late 1980s where Kathy lost her eyesight. It was a definite demonic attack, etc., like that. A definite hit from the devil. Anyway, in those, it was a 13 year period. And in that 13 year period, I made one of these statements. I go on a trip to the nation of Greece. We're in Greece. We finish the, that, that ministry time. Uh, we go to the airport. I call home to check on Kathy. And Kathy says this. She said, Sam, you're not going to believe what happened today. I said, what happened? Well, on the service the day before, 
she's sitting in our church there on the front row where we sit. She's sitting there, and she's holding our young grandson, just a young boy, all right? Good ability to communicate and things, but I don't remember the exact age from that. He was probably four. And he's in his lap, and, and, and she's sitting there, and they're worshiping, and she's saying, God, I don't want Kalen, is his, his name, I don't want Kalen just to grow up hearing about these things. I don't want him just to hear about these intercessions. I don't want him to just hear about these visitations. God, I want you to show yourself to Kalen. The cry of a grandmother sitting a little boy in her lap. A day later, he's in our home. They're sitting right in that area that I described a moment ago in our bedroom. They're playing with a farm set that his daddy played with when he was a little boy. She can't see anything. She can't see light. She can't just everything is dark. They're playing, having a great time. She sees all kinds of things in the spirit realm, and God shows her things, takes her places, those are the kind of experiences. So if she sees something, she's used to just seeing it, not with her eyes. Not as a mere human. Because we spend too much time being moved by what the Word says. Don't keep looking at the things that are temporal. But you look at the things that are eternal. You look at the things that are not of this realm, but another realm. You look at what's being there in the seated with Christ in the heavenly places. You see what's happening. You feel the rare air of cherubim wings. You feel the understanding of what it is to hear the resounding sound of worship around the throne. You feel what it is to see the four faces of the four living creatures. You behold the magnificence and the power and the glory and the life of what is there. It's not a doctrine. It's an experience. And it's not an experience for somebody else. It's an experience for you. Probably nobody explains more than I've heard Wade sharing in this last week of, hey, this stuff in the blood is for us. This salvation is for all of us. This salvation is for everybody. And he just keeps reaching out, and you see it in the lives of many of you that I've been able to meet. This reality is the fact that, no, it's not about a doctrine, a teaching. It's about a person. It's about a God who says, tell my people. Now, I had people in our congregation that's been with us for years. Some of them go, uh oh, here goes Sam saying again, something's going to happen. And you know, it happens to some of them, and some of them it doesn't happen to. And those that it doesn't happen to, they're kind of irritated at me. Those that it happens to, they're happy. So you got to live with it all. But God is telling you, every one of you, I don't care who you are, where you came from, or where you think you're going. God wants to show up at your house. He wants to show you that He really lives there with you. You say, well, God's in me. He lives in me. Yeah, yeah, I know that. And you know, He's bigger than just inside of you. Because you'd be a mere human. But He's a big God that's inside of every one of us. And He's inside of multiple millions all over the world. Here's this God that is there. So anyway, Kathy's there in the floor playing with the farm set not able to see anything, suddenly a huge bolt of horizontal lightning goes flashing through the room. She's going to perceive it. In the, she sees it, not with her eyes, but a little four-year-old boy saw it with his eyes. It was not something just spiritual. It was not something, oh, well, Kathy, she's kind of weird. And, you know, she sees... She sees weird things, and, and, you know, she's that kind of person. But that's not me. I'm intelligent. I don't, I don't move by my emotion. I don't move by my... That wasn't an emotion she was being moved by. That's knowing the presence and the anointing of God. Boom! This big, horizontal, wide flash of lightning came through the room. Little Caitlin jumps up. Grandma, lightning tried to hit me. (laughs) 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 
and she's telling me this, and I'm going, I wasn't there. I tell everybody everywhere, everybody loves Kathy more than they love me. And it's true, even God loves her more than he loves me. He showed up there, right in there, with that little boy. That little boy jumps up, Grandma, light. Well, Grandma knows what it is. And Grandma tells the little boy. And our son walks through the door, and Kathy goes, Daniel, is it storming outside? She can't see. She doesn't know whether the sun shines or the sun doesn't shine. He says, no, Mom. It's a beautiful day, sun shining. And then they explain, and he feels the presence of God, and they all sit the presence of God for a while. Do you feel that intensity of his presence right now? He wants to come to your home. He wants to show you. He wants you to all of a sudden you realize that when you're preoccupied by things and you're doing the same old habits that you do, that suddenly you find out you become aware there's someone else in the room. And he is God. He is God. He is God. I remember one day I'd been praying, and I like to pray two or three hours in tongues before services. It's letting the Spirit of God edify and build up and release things and speak mysteries. I mean, just think about that. The gift of the Holy Spirit. I don't know if you guys spend a lot of time praying in tongues, but you should. Because the Holy Spirit is speaking mysteries. Think about it. Speaking mysteries. Not so that you won't understand them. They're mysteries that you don't know. He's going to speak them and then interpret them and give you the insight. He's going to release into you the mysteries of God. Just like the Apostle Paul said there in, 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 in Colossians. He said, you know, there's a mystery. It was hidden for ages past. We didn't know about it. But now it's been revealed to us. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Other people didn't see it, but we see it. Now we know it, and now we experience it. There's still things to be known. The richness of what this Bible is, the richness and this glory and the magnificence of God, everything that we understand, you don't understand all of it yet. Whatever you've seen of Christ, whatever you know of Christ, that's not the last revelation of that we think, oh, I've arrived. You never arrive. He's always bigger than that. Your last experience can be absolutely superseded by the experience today and tomorrow and tonight. And we just need to say, yes, 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 God, I have to have you more. I have to have you more. I have to have you more. I was telling a story, but I don't know what it was. Oh, yeah, I was praying in tongues. And I was praying before a service, and I went in to take a little break before the service started. And I went in there and sat down in my chair, and it has a high back on it. And I sat down in the chair. I went leaning it back and put my feet up on my desk. All right? I'm going to take just a few moments just to relax. I closed my eyes. The minute I close my eyes, I'm caught up, and I see what's known as the Western Wall, the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. At that time, I'd never been to Israel. I've been several times since then. But I'd never been there, but I knew, the, knew, knew this would be the place. I'd seen the pictures. And as I'm just beholding this, I become aware of the people. They're there. They're praying. Men, women, they're praying. I didn't know it was divided at that time with women over here and men over here, but I saw that. And there this reality was... And, but up in the very far right, as far as you could see on the wall, I began to see something. And I didn't know what I was looking at. And I began, and, I, because I, and still to this day, I don't even try to describe it because I don't know how to describe it. Because it wasn't of this realm. I mean, Jesus took on flesh. We can see him. Jesus, the glorified, his body was red. They saw him when he walked on the earth. They saw him as he ascended into heaven. But as I'm looking at this, I'm saying, God, who, who is this? He said, this is the Holy Spirit. Well, I'd never seen the Holy Spirit before. I didn't know what the Holy Spirit looked like. But here he was. And, and the holiness, the presence, and you feel it intensifying even now. Because when you begin to see into that realm, this realm begins to change. It's being changed into that image of what you see. 
Paul said, no, it's like looking in a mirror. You look in a mirror. You look in it long enough. It, you, you see the Christ. The glory is Christ. And the glory is in the face of Christ. We need to seek Him. God said, seek my face. We didn't say seek my face if He wasn't going to show you His face. <sighs> so here is the Spirit of the living God. And I'm watching this and I'm thinking, wow, it's holy. I don't know what to do. I'm just... I just want to observe and I'm being touched by this emanating presence. He's, he's holy. He's the Holy Spirit. That's why with Reeves House teaching, this reality that, you know, Holy Spirit told me, he said, if I come in, you go out. I'm not going to share my will. I'm not going to share. He's a person. He said, I'm not going to come in and share my will with you. You have to go out and I'm going to come in. And then I'm going to use you in mighty ways. Then you're going to become just like me. Well, I found myself being transformed by the presence, by His face. So I'm just there. And then I see something. The Holy Spirit standing at the top of that wall. All those people, women first, then the men, praying, praying, praying. All of a sudden, I see the Holy Spirit kind of bends forward. He blows. I could see the breath. It was living. We know the word is living. It's active. It's sharper than just so we believe it. We say amen to it. But I saw the words coming out of the breath of the Holy Spirit. It had tangibility. It had form. It had life. It had salvation. Now, heaven declared with a loud voice, now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of His Son has come. And I saw it come and I saw people that are bound, people that know not Jesus, people that his eyes are veiled, those in Judaism, their eyes are veiled, and others that are there out of ritual and not out of real salvation, born again experience, but every one of them as that living, pulsating life of Almighty God flowed across them as I watched it go hand after hands and hands flew up and mouths began to proclaim, yes, Jesus, Yeshua, He is the Messiah. He is Lord. He is King. It's real. Salvation is real. The Holy Spirit is real. And the Holy Spirit is breathing out on every one of us. And the Holy Spirit, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, it could be any of those. Don't just look for what does God look like. I, you know, okay. He'll show you. What does Jesus look like now and glorified? I've seen Jesus in many different expressions and forms. The Holy Spirit, what does He... I, I don't even try to describe the Holy Spirit. How do you describe such holiness? How do you describe such magnificence? The one that comes to glorify the Lamb of God and to make that revelation come forth. He wants to come to your house. He wants to show up in your bedroom. I mean, not long ago, I told people, get ready. To, so you're going to start seeing angels in your house. You're going to just, you know. And, and one night, I mean, one night, I, I just woke up and I thought, there, somebody's here. So I opened my eyes and up in the edge of our bedroom, in the high, as a high part of the vaulted ceiling, the high point is gathering of angelic beings just looking down, coming from the throne of God, bringing to us what we need, speaking to His beloved even in their sleep. It's not a doctrine not a theology. That is all those things. We study all those big words. Pneumatology, soteriology. We study all that stuff. But he's just a person. Looking to walk into your house. 
looking to come up and sit by you. Speak to you. He'll touch you. He'll care for you. I want you to know that. He said, well, that, that's for heaven. That's what I always thought. That's for heaven. But then, you see, you know, we, yeah, the word says you may be entertaining angels unaware. You may miss the reality. And I went to one of the intercessions God gave us with the nation of Bangladesh. I won't go into all that. But once I went to a trip there and they wouldn't, they wouldn't let me in. Because I didn't have a visa, because I always bought the visa when I got there, but it was in the middle of the night and the visa place was closed. We couldn't get it, and they said, Don't have it. And the guy kept looking at my passport, and his English was bad, and he goes, No visa. I said, Yes, I buy there. It's closed. Help me. You know, and he's, Visa. Oh, I said, Don't have a visa. He goes, I need you to. No, you have to have visa. And finally, he just kept flipping through, and he, and he turned, and he, he saw a big visa there from Suriname. He goes, Visa. And I go, No. No. That's from Suriname. He says, No, Visa. And I go, No. He goes, Visa. And finally, God says, Be quiet. Because <laughs> Kathy knows I'm a big truth guy. That's not truth. That's not a Bangladeshi Visa. That's Suriname Visa. I'm right. You're wrong. And God had to say, Just stop talking. Agree with the man. So when I heard agree with the man, I him and said, Yeah, visa. <laughs> he pulls it out. He stamps it. That was great, man. I mean, I walked through the jungles of, of Bangladesh and stand out there and water up this high with my little bag on my head saying, God, I'd spend the rest of my life out in these hills because there's a million people here that have never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're still going from village to village, opening up new villages with those people that we've planted into and supported through these years. So anyway, so then I get back out of the jungle and I go to the airport to leave the country. Never thinking, I mean, and I'm, God's with me, I'm in this country, right? I get up there to get out, the man goes, no visa! I said, uh, no visa, you have no visa, how'd you get in country? I said, you see the stamp? He says, yes. No visa. You can't be here. But, oh, brother. Now I'm spending the rest of my life in Bangladesh. But not in the jungle. In a prison. I wasn't really excited. So I'm standing there and this man, he's getting very upset. You know, you have, you have no visa. You cannot be here. You break law. I mean, it's just, you know, I'm just kind of, oh, oh, oh. And uh, all of a sudden, here comes a distinguished man. Some English gentleman with a big English accent. Maybe Welsh. I don't know. He walked right up to this guy, three-piece suit. Walked right up to the guy said, is there a problem here? And the man looks at him and he goes, no visa. He says, give me the passport. I'll take care of it. Gave the man the passport. That guy gave the man the passport. I thought, I don't know who he is, but I'm following him. <laughs> yeah. So I just take off after this guy, and we're going along there, and he goes, no problem, no problem. I said, thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. He takes me right up, takes me right through. He just kind of, he didn't disappear in front of my eyes, but I thank him, turn around, take my next steps, and I see the man nowhere. I don't know what happened. All I know is, God's a good God. Now, I was very unaware, but I was really hopeful somebody's going to show up that could get me out of my problem, all right? All right, so God wants us to live in another realm. Amen. He's got to, and He's telling you He's going to come to your house. Now, don't be theological with me and say, well, He's there already. I know He's there already. He was there already in our house. And He was there already even more powerfully when the big bolt of lightning came through, okay? Tonight, I'm going to take this a step further and tell you what started happening in the nations when I tell that story, okay? So you're going to get ready for some powerful things that are going to break out. Somebody say amen. amen. No, I mean, that story will change governments. That story will change persecution. That story opens up salvation for people, all right? That story does, and I'm going to show you some things that begin to happen. All right, God's, God's a good God, amen? 
He's a good God, and I'm excited about him. Amen? I was excited. I surrendered to the ministry at age 17. I've been preaching all my life. People say, is that all you've ever done? Like, ugh. I look at him and I said, yeah, that's all I've ever done. At 17, I heard the voice of God say to me, I want you to spend the rest of your life sharing the love of Jesus with people. And I've had that privilege 54 nations later with tens of thousands of churches throughout the earth. Our God is a good God. He's a good God, and He's the one that set it in motion. And I had people come up to me. I had some very loving parents that were very, very supporting. I had my grandparents one side in my church. I had aunts and uncles. It was a great time and all that kind of stuff. And they all would come to me and say, Boy, because I was excited when God called me to preach. I was excited to share those things. And they would say, You know, you know, yeah, I know you're excited now, but you, you'll get over it. I, can't, I look at those people and say, Why are you telling me that? Why are you encouraging me with that discouragement? You know, why are you doing that? Well, I know you're excited now, but you'll, you'll settle down, you know, and it's like, oh, I don't want to really, but okay. But I want to tell you something. 1966 to today, I am more excited. I'm 70, so you don't have to figure it up, okay? Absolutely, I am more excited today than I was then. And every year that goes by and every day that goes by, because I know Him more, every day that goes by, I become more conformed to His image. Every day I'm able to see more into that spiritual realm. I'm able to hear more of the counsel in heaven that's speaking and talking. You're, that's what He's wanting, folks, and that's what He wants for you. He wants us everyone to say, God, I have to know you. I mean, I started crying out. I mean, you know, I used to scare some of these guys at the Bible college. I was so hungry for God, man. I, have to ha I had to have him. I had to have him. I had to have him. I had to have him because he said to seek his face. And I wanted him because he was so precious. All right? With Kathy's sickness in 1975, we got filled with the Spirit. 44 years ago this September, 44 years ago, we got filled with the Spirit in September. In October, she's diagnosed with a terminal situation. The greatest moment of our lives, all right? I'm finishing the residency on my doctorate at that time. We're ready to start life, ready to start a family, ready to start in a bigger church, you know, because that's what happens. If you get a bigger degree, you go to a bigger church. And I went from looking, trying to figure out how to go from steeple to steeple in different church and bigger church to figuring out the whole world is in the heart of Jesus Christ. That I could decide, I heard T.L. Osborne say one day to a group of graduating people, he said, look, your, 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 your backyard can become as big as you want it to be. You can either step out and be confined, or you can open up and see the vastness of the world and go out there, because that vastness of the world is what Jesus Christ said that belonged to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, ask of me and I'll give you the nations as your inheritance. And the very ends of the earth is your possession. He didn't say be satisfied. I mean, when I went to the seminary, they said, okay, get this degree, get these degrees. The more degree you get, the bigger church you can get. We want you to start this insurance policy because you're going to retire one day. Start this pension and those kind of things. And then you learn, learn to play golf because that will give you something to do when you retire. Retire. That's... That's the thing that they got us ready to do. Now, isn't that, doesn't that sound like the Bible? No. I'll give you the answer. All right? What sounds like the Bible is to take the gospel to the world until you can't say, until you can't walk, until you can't talk. But everything inside of us has to be resonating the glory and the magnificence of God to announce that He is Lord, that He is Savior, that He is Messiah, and that everything, every principle, just think about that. Every principality, I may go in this further tonight, every principality, every power has to bow to Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Woo! God wants to come to your house. Yes. Well, He's here this morning, man. He was here in the worship. He was here in the praise. He was here in the eating the pastries. But I tell you, He wants to be with you with such intimacy. He wants to take you further into Himself. I feel, I feel that. That's what I feel. I mean, I, I, not just my hand. My whole being feels like this. You know, but I've been praying something for several, several months now. That reality of, about, about Jesus said, if, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw him in unto me. Now, we know that it's theology. We'll say amen to that. We know he was upon the cross. He said, I'm going to draw people. I'm going to draw all men unto myself. 
And when I when he just burned that inside of my spirit, I started declaring that. I started making those declarations out there. And the more then that's when I start, oh, he's pulling us further into himself. Because he's pulling me. He's not just saving the lost. He's pulling me. He pulls that new person as he's born again further into himself because it's in Christ. We're in Christ. We're in Christ. We're in Christ. Amen. Amen. Woo. Okay, I'm excited. All right. Now, I used to be, I have people come up to me now and they go, well, Sam, you know, you're getting older, you're getting more wise. And I see you're really getting maturity in your life. And I just smile at them, agree with them, <laughs> let them go on in their whatever it is. I could call it several things. And I just get, and what they don't know is this, I'm just really tired, man. I've been running all over the world for a long time and I'm 70 years old and I've got more scheduled in this coming year than I've ever scheduled in my whole life and that's been a real deal. I mean, I am on the move because of what? Because he's changing us into his image and the image is pulling us further into himself and we're going to be more like him every moment of every existence of every... He's going to come to your house and he's going to wake you up in the night. He's going to let me sleep. <laughs> it happened. One of the guys, Jennifer, you guys know Jennifer. Jennifer always sleeps so well. And I've slept better here this week than I don't know. It's just amazing. I mean, it's amazing. And I said, she said, did you sleep well last night? I said, yes. She said, I didn't. She said, I've not slept well. We just reversed. I don't sleep now. I always, but no, I thought, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. <laughs> but I want to get up in the night, okay? This, you know why? Because one night he wakened me, giving me a verse of scripture. Ray even made reference to this morning or some morning. We've been together a whole week. I really, really love and appreciate Wade and Claire and Tony and all of our workers. Amen. Such a good thing. But I woke up one night with God giving me this verse. I looked at it, and that's the way he speaks. A lot of times he gives me a passage of scripture, book, chapter, verse, open it up, and it says this. Take no rest for yourselves and give him no rest until he makes all of Jerusalem a praise throughout all the earth. And I said, God, I don't want to rest and I'm never going to give you rest because you say it until you make Jerusalem every promise that comes out of Jerusalem by the hand of God. Jesus Christ is the exalted one. It's been an exciting life. It's been an exciting life filled with the glory and the magnificence and the power of God. Not without difficulties and challenges, and we, we've had those, but man, we love Jesus, don't we? The most difficult things, we only find out how much more that we love Him. Wow. I have one more passage of scripture that I want to read. I want you to go to Psalm 29. It's very important because, again, this is something where the Word of God, this is what he's wanting to get through to us, where the Word of God is not something we just read in the Bible that's history or what God did, but it is a truth, it is a manifestation of God of what He wants to do now in our lives. In 1989, after a very involved intercession that was very, very difficult for Kathy and myself and our church was involved in it, we came through it in a glorious, glorious victory. All right? We began to go, I, I went running to the nations like a wild stallion, okay? Because we saw death totally conquered and we saw the breaking open beginning of, of the sword of, of Islam, many different things from that standpoint. And we, we came to the Bible college. We were here, and one night in the middle of the night, we got a call that Kathy's sister, three years older than Kathy, was killed in a tragic automobile accident. It was a great intercessor, the one that really got filled with the Spirit first in our family and began to share that with us. 
and live there with us in the Shawnee area. And uh, it was a great, great tragedy. And of course, we went home as a result of that. We didn't cut our trip very short. And that after getting that call, they brought us breakfast and uh, in our room, and they said, "Well, we're sure you don't want to minister this morning." And I said, "No, no, I want to minister. I want to minister." And they said, "You do? Why? Why? I want to minister." Because Jesus one night awakened me and told me something. He told me, he told me to the story when John the Baptist was beheaded. This is very important. It'll, it'll help change your life. When John the Baptist was beheaded, that was Jesus' physical cousin. Jesus said there's no one greater than John the Baptist. That's a pretty significant person. He got his head cut off. Jesus went out to be by himself. But you would think that's what you do, because that's usually what we do. We retreat. He went away, and immediately the crowds began to come. And immediately he ministered. God, awaken me in the night. Give me the book, chapter, and verse. God, I read that. He said, Sam, this was years before this 89 death of her sister. He said, no matter what happens in your life, never stop speaking the word. Never stop speaking the word. Do not run from the calling on your life. Do not pull back from the calling on your life. You let me release myself because that's your victory. It is. It's a living word. You pull back to indulge yourself as a mere human, and we are, and we have emotions, but they're always to be triumphed over by the power of the Christ. And nothing releases more of the Christ than letting Him flow into you and through you to people that have needs. Amen. So I said, no, I want to. So I did. We get home. We're there with our family. We do this service. And the next service in our church, I want you to see this dynamic. The next service in the church, God gave me a certain thing to say, and He said, there's going to come, and I told the people this beforehand, God says there's going to come a time in the service when He's going to tell me, now is the time to read Psalm 29. I told the people, just like I'm telling you. There's going to come a time. And I said this, and God has told me that there will be times in this when I'm to raise my hand. All right? Now, what am I talking that's a That's a pretty close dialogue, fellowship with your Father. That's what He wants for every one of us. That's what He's offering to every one of us. And all that you've been hearing and receiving from Wade and Claire and others through these years, all of that, the, everything is leading us further into these things. All right? Listen. So, you're going to read a certain passage in the service when I tell you to read it. So I told people, I don't know when He's going to, I may interrupt my sermon. I'm going to read it when he says, I'm giving this message, and all of a sudden I say, God's told me now's the time to read it. And I'm to raise my hand. Let's just start reading with verse 29. I mean, Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O sons of the mighty. Ascribe, sign to him, put it on, give it, make that declaration. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Now, I'm raising my hand, but this wasn't the time, I'll tell you. Ascribe to the Lord, I'm just reading it to the congregation. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due His name. Do you think it's all about ascribing to God? It's all about ascribing to God. Then he said this, Worship the Lord in holy array. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. And when I read right there, when I read the God of glory thunders, God said, throw up your hand. And I threw up my hand. I said, the God of glory thunders and threw up my hand. And <laughs> the whole building shook. Amen. He's not a God of history. He's a God of now. That by His Spirit gives us His Word. Amen. And we're to speak His Word when He says to speak His Word. Jesus didn't do anything to what He saw the Father do. He didn't say anything to what He heard the Father say. That's what I was doing. I want us to see that. That's what I seek to do every day of my life. That's what God's after. Because that's the life of the Christ. That's what He wants. You have to come, go out. You, If I come in, He said, you go out. Okay, so I threw up my hand. I mean, ask me if that got everybody's attention. Ask me if those people that were grieving ourselves until we lost one of our dearest, dearest, 
friends, family members, intercessor. It was tragic. Something happened when the God of glory thundered. And I mean, all the people that is, oh my. As I said, I can't make it thunder. I can do a lot of other things. <laughs> but I can't make it thunder. Okay, so then I went on. Verse 3. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The glory of God. Oh, I read that one. Thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The, what have I been talking about today? The voice of God, hearing God, experiencing things. Verse 5. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. He said, throw up your hands. I threw up my hands. We all, I mean, yeah, there was a pause. We did some selahs. We paused. You understand selah here, don't you? That pause in Scripture. That we, we paused. It's like, wow, that's twice. What we found out the next day when we gathered together on Monday for school, in our Christian school, when the teachers took the students out for the first recess that morning, the only pole on our, the highest pole on our property, a light pole between our church and the playground, because we had little trees. This was 89. We didn't have big trees. We have bigger trees now. But we, that post, tele, light post, telephone kind of post, wooden big thing, had been struck by lightning, split over, the light had fallen in splinters all over the ground. I hold those splinters in my office to this day. It was a God that took revelation of who He is and was showing His people, I'm more powerful than this event. I'm more powerful than this scheme of hell. I'm after the nations. And while we came through this great victory and then the devil hit at us in that perspective, there's so much more of the story. But I'm telling you, God was saying to us, no, I'm God. So we go on. Where were we? That was number five. I go on then after a period. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syria like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord hews out flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer to, uh, yeah, to calf and strips the forest bare. And in His temple, everything says glory. And I threw up my hand and... <laughs> We all just kind of find ourselves there. Realizing that there is this incredible holy God that is powerful and majestic that was showing us in the midst of any circumstance that He is this magnificent, powerful God that wants to show the nations who He is. He wants to come to your house. Yeah, I like that. That's one of my favorite words. I don't know what it is, but it sure is nice. <laughs> He's coming to your house. Amen. amen, amen. That's good, yeah. Amen, amen. I, yeah, I like amen. Amen's a good word. The four living creatures say it all the time. Read Revelation 5. They're saying amen continually. Amen, amen, amen. I mean, let him take you up there and hear it. Somebody say yes. Yeah, you want to go? Yes. Kathy took a whole group of women one time into the throne room. And she didn't plan on it. They were just together praying, and all of a sudden, there they were in the presence of Almighty God. Woo! <laughs> okay. Now. I'm going to pray a prayer. Amen. He's going to touch every one of us. Amen. Amen. I mean, He's your God. He loves you. Jesus died for you. He purchased you with His blood. Wow.
Shakyanda la bocho koreapa. Barama so shende de ketre. Baraman yang grandose cremende koreapa kalacho. Kayanda ramana so che remene krenen konaya rote. Gaha na na no kroboke chikira. Bayan na na koreapa se kete protono ko chingandiato koreepe. Para pa sombrende kende kene se kene mropo kujete bonjen kedra bocho kreapa ya taraka largo. My children, I want you to see. I want you to hear. I want you to know what's happening in the heavenlies. For you have prayed, you have sung, you have declared that my kingdom has come to this earth. It has come and it is coming, and I want to open your eyes to see the host of heaven, to see the angelic host of heaven that's gathering around this nation and around this place. I want you to see it. I want you to know it. I don't want you to say, yes, I believe. I want you to see. I want you to behold. For did not my son say that is surely... As surely as that reality of salvation and life would be seen, that there was coming a time when he would find those worshipers that would indeed see the angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man, the Son of God. And I declare unto you that that time is now. That time is now. That time is now. I say never forget the word now. That time is now. That time is now. For there are angels that are ascending and descending now on the Son, my Son, Jesus the Christ, the Messiah. He is the one, and He is the only one. And I say unto you, is it not true that if that Son is in you, that there will be angels ascending and descending on you? Never forget and allow me to open you that you would see, that you would hear, that you would know of the magnificence of my life, for my son has purchased it, and his word declares that he shall see of the travail of his soul and be satisfied. Decide this day that Jesus will be satisfied with you, that you will become a seeker, one who seeks my face, and I will show you my face, I will show you my glory, I will show you my goodness, and the nation shall indeed tremble and bow before my son for he is the Lord and I have made him to be both Lord and Christ this Jesus whom you have crucified hallelujah Jesus everybody shout hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. everybody get up and shout 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 hallelujah. you you guys know how to shout 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 Today, I believe you will stand yeah, come on. and you will know exactly who you are Amen. in Christ Jesus. It was in an environment of unconditional love with the presence of Holy Spirit moving with Jesus lifted high. Unite over mercy and unite over mission. 
and when our hearts are united for the purpose of the heart of God in that we see the church united and the Spirit of God come and bless that unity and he begins with the church and then pours out upon the world.